Hello everyone, how are you? Welcome to the new chapter, cyanogenic glycoside. So this lecture will be discussing about part one of cyanogenic glycoside. So first, as usual, we'll go through the learning outcome of this chapter. At the end of this lecture, uh, in fact the whole chapter, you will be able to define cyanogenic glycoside, outline natural occurrence of cyanogenic glycoside, define a process known as cyanogenesis, and also you will be able to explain the significance of cyanogenic glycosides, why we are studying this, what is their role in uh, plant as well as human body and also at the end of this chapter you will be able to explain the botanical name, family name, uses of important plant species that are containing cyanogenic glycosides. So first we will start with what are cyanogenic glycosides. I would like to mention here that cyanogenic glycosides are also known as cyanophore glycosides and they are generally o-glycoside that means uh, the linkage between the sugar and non-sugar is the oxygen atom so that's why they are known as o-glycoside and they are also beta linked beta linked means the aglycon part remain above the plane that is on the same side of the CH2OH of the sugar and they yield HCN that is cyanohydric acid upon hydrolysis that's why they are known as cyanogenic glycoside. These glycosides give cyanohydric acid that is uh, HCN when they undergo hydrolysis. Now these cyanogenic glycosides are represented by more than 2500 species of plants and the most common plant families that uh, uh, contain species producing the cyanogenic glycosides are Rosaceae, Leguminaceae, Giraniaceae, Ericaceae, Poaceae, Compositae, Euphorbiaceae and Passiflorasi. We will be studying some of them, not all of them. Now cyanogenic glycosides are responsible for multiple diseases or disease conditions in human body as well as different animals who are eating those plant containing the cyanogenic glycosides. And it accounts for, cyanogenic glycosides account for 90% of the wider group of plant toxins and they are also known as cyanogens. Common plant genera, that means a genus, which are reported to cause poisoning to both animal and human being are prona species, the examples of plant species uh, that comes under the genus prunus are wild cherry, black cherry and bitter almond. Another important species is sambuca species. Okay, one of the example of sambuca species is linen. Sorghum which is uh, heavily used especially in this country, sorghum and Sudan grass, Jordan, uh, Johnson grass, all of them come under the genus sorghum. Money hot, which is again very very important, we will discuss in detail about the money hot. We will see uh, one of the most important example of many hot is the cassava root. We will see later during the lecture that many people died while consuming the cassava root products, which contains cyanogenic glycosides. Another example of genus, important genus, is bambusa. That means nothing but the genus of bamboo plant. And then triglosine genus, which is the genus of aerograss. Coming to natural distribution of cyanogenic glycosides. Cyanogenic glycosides are widely distributed among 100 fami families of flowering plants, and they are also found in some species of farm, fungi, and bacteria. Uh, examples are some species of mushroom. So before you eat mushroom or buy mushroom, make sure that you buy the good quality one, good variety. Otherwise, the wrong variety of mushroom contains a lot of cyanogenic glycoside, which may cause toxicity to your body if you consume it improperly. And there are many economical important plants that are uh, also highly cyanogenic in nature or containing cyanogenic glycoside. For example, white clover, linen, almond. When you talk about almond, especially the bitter almond. So I'd like to tell you when you buy almond or eat you might have noticed there are two varieties. 
sweet almond and bitter almond so bitter almond the taste of bitterness is mainly because of the presence of cyanogenic glycoside more the presence of cyanogenic glycoside more will be the taste of bitterness so try to buy the sweet almond bitter almonds are not that good for health because of the presence of cyanogenic glycoside and uh, import most important example is cassava root and i'd like to mention here that volatile oils of bitter almond and wild cherry are used as sedatives in various cup preparation and also similar preparations these are the uh, pictures of sorghum if you look at this picture of sorghum it is heavily consumed especially in this country jordan and cassava root this is how it looks bitter almond of course look wise bitter almond and sweet almond they look both similar only the taste defines the presence or absence of uh, quantity of cyanogenic glycoside bar cherry white clover and lima beans all of them contain based on their variety age the quantity of cyanogenic glycosides now we will discuss about a process that is known as cyanogenesis it is the ab ability of plants to synthesize cyanogenic glycoside and the plant use this process of cyanogenesis as a protective mechanism okay to protect itself from the predators and pathogens and various other microorganisms and especially also against the predators like herbivores to discourage the herbivores from eating the plant or part of the plant and they are the they are means the cyanogenesis is the condensation condensation products of hcn the cyanohydric acid and carbonyl compounds so you can see the hcn and carbonyl compound which can be aldehyde or ketone they condense together to form an unstable compound known as cyanohydrin and this cyanohydrin is nothing but known as the a glycon part of the glycoside which is highly unstable which upon further uh, glycosylation okay it results in the formation of cyanogenic glycoside here i would like to mention two point here when you talk about the glycosylation mainly the or mostly the d glucose is attached to the oh group of this a glycon as compared to all other uh, sugar moiety and secondly if you have noticed in all other glycoside chapter we have seen it is the a glycon part which is generally more stable compared to the glycoside because the glycosidic linkage between the a glycon and glycon they are uh, prone to hydrolysis but in this case cyanohydrin uh, cyanogenic glycoside this is a glycoside which is comparatively more stable as compared to the a glycon that is cyanohydrin and second important point is the sugar is d glucose mostly the d glucose which forms the glycoside linkage and that's why if you see the link that form is oxygen that's why most of the um, actually all those cyanogenic glycosides are o glycoside in nature because the linkage between the a glycon and glycon is oxygen and these are uh, five of the most important examples of cyanogenic glycoside first one is prunacin if you look at the structure of prunacin and amygdalin the difference is the presence of one sugar the so prunacin plus one more sugar it becomes amygdalin okay then durhin the difference between durhin and prunacin is the presence of oh group at the para position of the aromatic chain another one is lotastralin lotastralin if you see the carbon containing the cn group has a methyl group and next one is linamarin if you look at the difference between linamarin structure as compared to all other the linamarin a glycon part it does not contain any aromatic ring so these are the five important examples of cyanogenic glycoside and more than 50 cyanogenic glycoside have been identified so far out of which this five are most importantly found in the seeds or kernels of various fruits and other fruits as well now the enzyme hydrolysis of this cyanoglycoside okay releases cyanohydric acid so what we are talking about is the opposite process of cyanogenesis 
Cyanogenesis is the synthesis of cyanogenic glycoside. So plants synthesize cyanogenic glycoside as a defense mechanism and store it inside it. It does not use the cyanogenic glycoside until there is a need. Okay. So when there is a need, plant will cause the hydrolysis of the cyanogenic glycoside that was synthesized by a process of cyanogenesis. And the hydrolysis of cyanogenic glycoside which will result in the formation of HCN, that is cyanohydric acid, which is very toxic in nature. So when any uh, people or uh, the animal get exposed to this cyanohydric acid, they get a toxic effect or toxicity, which is harmful. So enzyme hydrolysis takes place with the help of two different types of enzyme. First one is beta glucosidase and second one is uh, hydroxynitrile lyase. So beta glucosidase first cause hydrolysis of the uh, cyanogenic glycoside which results, which breaks the, uh, the linkage between the sugar and a glycon and result in the formation of cyanohydrin plus sugar. And this cyanohydrin, as I mentioned previously, it is highly unstable in nature. So it will further undergo hydrolysis by hydroxynitrilase, which results in the release of HCN. And this is the HCN which is toxic, which causes toxicity to the animal or human being. So this reaction is just the opposite reaction of the cyanogenesis where cyanogenic glycosides are formed from the SN and plant use it, okay, break it when it is required. Now the question is, what, what are the requirements, what are the conditions when plant use this reaction to release HCN? So you have to remember, when the plant tissue is intact, that means when there is no damage to the plant tissue, the plant will not cause the hydrolysis of cyanogenic glycosides or in other words the cyanogenic glycosides and the enzymes will remain separated from each other whenever there is a, whenever the plant tissue is intact that means there is no damage to the plant tissues okay and these enzymes are mainly present in cytosol whereas the cyanogenic glycosides are present in uh, vacuoles of the plant but if there is any damage to the plant tissue. Damage means when damage can happen, imagine a cow or cattle, when it comes and eats the part of the plant, the plant tissue get damaged. So that time the enzymes and the cyanogenic glycoside, they come together and the enzyme causes the hydrolysis of the cyanogenic glycoside to release the HCN, which is toxic to the, uh, the uh, herbivores, okay? And this process is happening to uh, discourage the herbivory and protect the plant against further damage. As I mentioned, you can see here enzymes and cyanogenic glycosides are put in contact when there is a damage in the plant tissue and HCN is released as a plant self-defense mechanism to discourage herbivores. Now, talking about the toxicity of cyanogenic glycoside, that means how cyanogenic glycoside or ACN cause toxicity when it is consumed by the animal or human being or when it is exposed to the animal tissue or other toxic or parasitic plant tissues. So cyanohydric acid is extremely toxic to wide spectrum of organisms mainly because of there are various reasons. One of the reasons is due to its ability to link with the metals such as iron, manganese and copper that are uh, uh, the functional group of many enzymes. And also you can imagine in human body, okay, or animal body, we have RBC contains uh, or hemoglobin contains iron which is responsible for carrying the oxygen. So imagine if it destroyed the iron, your body will also you know, suffer from hypoxia, it will also destroy the RBC and which becomes slowly lethal to the human body of the cell. It can also cause inhibition of reduction of oxygen in the cytochrome respiratory chain. It can also inhibit the electron transport in the photosynthesis and inhibit the 
activity of enzymes like catalase and oxidase. An amount of cyanogenic glycoside production by a plant, it depends on the age of the plant, variety of the plant, as well as the environmental factors. Now I would like, to, before I go further, I would like to ask a question here. Let me see if you can answer. Which of the following statements are true regarding the plant containing cyanogenic or cyanoperglycoside? Option 1 is the release cyanohydric acid on hydrolysis if the plant tissue is damaged. Option B, the release cyanohydric acid on hydrolysis if the plant tissue is intact. And third point is the release cyanohydric acid as a protective device against predators such as the herbivores. Okay, and the option four is the release ACN which enhance plant tissue damage. So which are the correct option? The correct option is one in three. So the release when there is a damage to the plant tissue in order to in order to protect itself from the predators or other organisms. Second question. Which of the following genus of the plant contains cyanogenic glycoside? The most common genus, one of the common genus is Pronas. So with this, I will finish my lecture here. I will continue as part two in my next lecture. Thanks for your attention.